now that the plasterboard is on pretty much everywhere, everywhere except there, that's the only little bit that, you know, doesn't have it. I don't need to do it right now. What I want to get done is ordering the staircase for the loft because and I'm not, I'm not gonna plaster any of this until the staircase is on. It makes it easier to plaster. It means that if we pack the staircase out from the wall to get it plumb and level and whatever else, the plastering can come down onto it and fill any gaps and hide anything. Whereas if we plaster this whole wall and then I stick a staircase on, I'm gonna have to shim and you know whatever else. So I've got the laser level back out and that's set up. You can do it with one of these and then a tape measure, but it's just easier, right? I've got the, I have the level here. So what I'm doing, this, this laser effectively makes sure that the, the staircase, this, if this was the end of the stair, it will land on here and there'll be lots of space. So, you know, I can, I can dial that in or move that over as much as I wish, you know, to make sure I'm, I'm on it as much as I want to be. Obviously I haven't got a vast amount of space with this door lining here and the door frame. So I've just, I've got to kind of balance the two. So that's, that's fine. I kind of want to make sure that I'm really tight on the measurement this way, but I can be a little bit loose on the measurement this way because you can pack it out and, and bring it out from this way or bring it out from that way. That That's okay. Obviously you want to be tight everywhere, but if you're not, or if you can't be, then you can't really mess around too much with that because you need to make sure that the, you know, the, the stair lands on that and it's nice and sturdy when you cut this banister out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure from this wall at various points, coming back and you know, hitting here, 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 and I'll, and I'll do it lower down as well, just to make sure that I am dead dead on and exactly what the measurement is from here to here. If I take a couple of measurements, that's useful. The other point that I'll need to do is measure from the wood, from the white bit, up to the steel beam that's, that's on there to get the height, right? So finished floor height to finished floor height, that's, that's fine. I'll be creating a landing in this space there, so that's, that's irrelevant. But I think what will happen is probably most of this ceiling will come out and I'll rebuild a fair chunk of it actually, because I don't want this the whole way across or even part way across. So that'll be coming out. So yeah, I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time measuring, marking, making sure that I've got that accurate. I've done the measurements in the past, but then I stripped all of this plaster off. So I, I wanna redo it and check just in case to make sure that I'm perfectly happy. Effectively what we'll go for is a few steps up and a kite winder and then it'll come up again. So, so this will kind of land up here, come across and then, and then up. So yeah, uh, what I'll probably do is I'll show you the website that I'm gonna use. I've used them once before and I know other people have used them and it's really good. It's, it's called Stairbox. So I'm not sponsored by them. This isn't a paid video, but I'll, um, I'll put, put the details in there and you can see in the description, you can jump on there if you need a staircase as well because they're really good value for money. When you are figuring out your staircase and you want to know, well, basically there are some really critical measurements that you need to know. And I've jotted them down. I know that I have put the names on these wrong, but I've written something that I understand that I can comprehend. There are going to be lots of different names for things going and rise and run and all that sort of stuff, which is fine. All those things are good and it's worth getting to know what those are. I have incorrectly written them, but I, the measurements that I've checked are right. But it's ostensibly what you need is to know the measurement between where your staircase is gonna land and where the wall is, and also the distance between this wall and this wall, so that the staircase can, can sit on it. You also need to know the distance between here and your ceiling, and the distance between here being under the carpet where the wood is, the floorboard, and also, in my case, it's the top of the steel beam because that's the finished floor height. Well, that, that's the height at which the, uh, the step is going to land. It's gonna sit on the steel beam because all, this, all the treads here are 22 mil and you use 22 mil chipboard. And there's like a little mini step on the top one that lands on the thing, so it, that lands on the steel. So 
if you make sure that you measure it to the steel, then the top step will sit on it and you can butt your floorboard right up to it and it will all run through smoothly. And that, that's what I did in this here. So this runs nice and smoothly through because there's a little top mini tread. There's like a top mini tread here. So you can then run through between there and there. So you need to make sure that this top mini tread lands on your steel. Now, my steel is completely level, but if yours, if yours wasn't, I just wanna show you a quick technique of what you can do. If you get a 1.8 meter spirit level and you clamp it to the point where your staircase is gonna land, so like you can see that my, my spirit level is nice and level. This now sits directly above the area where I need to measure. So I can now run a, run a tape measure from the underside of this to the floorboard. And I know that I'll be bang on accurate because it's so level that I don't actually need to do that. What I could do is just measure from the floorboard here to the underside of this timber. That's another way for me to do it because this timber is sat directly on the steel beam. So there are lots of different options for that, but having a loft hatch like this makes such a big difference so you don't have to kind of measure and calculate your ceiling depth and all of that, because all of this is gonna go anyway, really. I'm gonna end up cutting a lot of this out because all it's doing is supporting the ceiling here. All the weight is being borne well above it on this steel beam now. So, so yeah, that's the deal. That's what you wanna, that's what you wanna work towards, really. So that's, that's just a very quick, Simple way of doing it. I'm gonna measure both. I'm gonna measure this one and this one just in case, but it's pretty accurate, this steel. So I'm not too, not too worried. Another thing that if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you will know I really like to do is to draw a little map or a plan of what it is I'm doing and how I think I'm gonna achieve this. So here are the measurements that I was referring to a minute ago. And I know I've given them the wrong title, like, you know, the going before the first turn, that sort of stuff. Uh, it's not actually, the going before the first turn is from here to here. What I needed to measure was from here to here. So I've given it the wrong name. And also from here to here and here to here. I, I know that I've given these the wrong titles. I don't really mind. I know what I mean. And I know what the map needs to look like. There are a couple of different ways you can do it. You can do quarter landings with a big square, or you can do kites and winders like this. And so I've measured this, so I know that the finished floor height to finish floor height is 2940. That's, that's absolutely fine. So that's, that's the total amount that the staircase is going to have to rise to get us from the level that we're on now up into the loft. I know that I want the width of my staircase to be 820. That can flex, that can be much narrower or it could be a little bit wider even. And the flex on that, by going wider here, it makes it wider here or narrower here, as well as here, because obviously the steps get wider. So, and this distance changes too. So this is quite a nice one. If, you've, if you wanna try and get it millimeter perfect, which you don't actually need to, because you can pack things out and shim. But if you want to try and get it you know, much closer. This is a great way, flexing this down to 805 or 810 or 800 mil is a really nice way of, of getting a couple of extra millimeters or losing a couple of extra millimeters, depending on what you're looking to achieve. Similarly, the go of each step, right? So each step is going 220 mil. If you made that 230 mil, the overall length of the staircase is going to increase without changing necessarily the number of steps. So that's, a, that's something else. I know that I need to travel 1.5 meters this way. I need to travel 2.5 meters this way. And the total overall is 1700, but I need to have a landing, which is at least the width of the stairs. So actually I need to go 920 and then have a flat landing as well. So it may well be that we have to do this. Ideally I would do this because I've got a hatch into the side loft and having a nice flat space would be help, more helpful but it may be that we have to go with this just because I need to keep traveling up. And this one doesn't get us to travel quite as much. 
Obviously the other way to flex that is then to, to make the rise per step higher than it is. If you've got less step, more steps, you don't have to go as high. If you've got less steps, each one of them needs to go higher. So the rise needs to be higher. One final point that I was, that I'm very keen to check is to make sure that the staircase isn't going to conflict with this opening here. Now I did tons of work measuring this on both sides of the wall before I cut it and installed the lintel there. But then when it's done and it's all in and everything and just before the staircase goes in, it still looks like it either comes over too far this way or goes up too high this way. And I just wanted to double check. So what I've done is I have set my spirit level up on the timber here, not on the carpet. And I've clamped it at, at uh, the point that makes it completely level in the bubble. So that's nice and level there. And then what I did is I measured from the top of the spirit level to the bottom of the header there. And that came out as two meters, two meters there. I also measured from here to the opening there, which is effectively from this point here to that point there. And that was 1.75 meters from there to there. So what I'm gonna try and do now, I'm gonna try and actually jump onto Stairbox and show you what I have done. And hopefully you'll be able to get a sense of how I have put this together and, and some of the compromises that I'm having to make and some of the bits that I think are gonna work quite well. So I'm gonna try and do that now. So here we are on the Stairbox website, you'll see there. And what I have done is I've gone for a UK domestic staircase. You can change it to Scottish, commercial, no regulations. If you wanted to put a staircase in a place that perhaps didn't need building control sign off. For almost all of us, we want this UK domestic standard. Now, floor height, do you remember on my, uh, in fact, actually, this is super helpful. It gives you, if you go to the question mark here, this is the total vertical rise from the finished floor height, i.e. The, um, the timber floorboards, not your carpet, where is the timber of the staircase going to be sitting? That's your finished floor height, going all the way up to the finished floor height where the staircase is going to be sitting and resting. In my case, that's my steel beam. In your case, it might well be the top step and you want to get rid of that mini tread. Either way, you need to figure out exactly what your finished floor height is on both uh, the, the, the new height and the old flight. This is not your floor ceiling height. This is a little example of the mini tread that I mentioned. So my floor height is 249, and you'll see that this is actually, it goes up in increments of five. Mine is 2492, irrelevant. 249 is absolutely fine. And then my ceiling height is 2350. So in this case here, that is the total vertical rise from the finished floor height from the uh, floorboards up to the underside of your ceiling. This is a less critical measurement, really. It doesn't have as much bearing. It's useful to know for the purposes of this, a headroom checker and ensuring that you have, you know, good headroom at various different points of the staircase, but it's not as critical by any stretch as the floor height to floor height. And then what you can do is you can change this. so. And, and it will tell you whether or not you are in or out of building regs here. So if I wanted 19 rises, all of them going 220 mil, so that's the run from, uh, from here to here, that's the going of the step, and they're all rising this, it doesn't comply with building regs, it won't work. So that, that arrangement doesn't work. Having 17 rises does work. But my measurements here, I need this to be 2530 and it's undersized, and I need this to be 1520, and it's undersized. So what you do is you just keep tweaking these and you can change the number of rises, how far they all go, and you'll see the measurements change. So this is getting closer now, 15, 10, and 257. The problem with this one is that this is too long. This is very close to my overall length, so this will land on the steel beam, but I don't want it to. For building regs, you have to have a landing at the top and the bottom that is at least the length of the width of the staircase. I'll say that again. So the landing has to be at least as long as the staircase is wide. That is the UK regulation. So in my instance, I need this to be lower. 
so that I can have around 80 centimeters or 800 mil of landing. It's, I'll be honest, it's very rare that that is measured, like the, the building inspector, unless they are a real jobs worth, it's unlikely they're gonna get a tape measure out and measure it. In fact, I've been around to friends' houses where the staircase lands at the door threshold of the room upstairs and it's been signed off, you know. But it is a useful thing to keep in mind. I wanna be as close to that as I can. So that doesn't work for me. So what I found does work is 14. Oh, and also here, right? So you can tweak this. So I can have it that I want a quarter landing here and a quarter landing here and it will adjust automatically. In my case, having a chitin winder here, so a three winder there, and coming up and round and having a quarter landing here with 14 steps overall, each of them going up 210, and each of them going 233. This was automatically worked out. This gives me a 42 degree staircase, which is within building regs, so there's no warning. It's five two, sorry, it's 2523. I need 2530. I can live with 7 mil. That's absolutely fine. And 1522 versus my 1520. Perfect. I can lose 2 mil. That's no problem at all. It's 800 wide, which I really like. And this is 1200. My overall distance is about 1750, 1730, something like that. So it's, it's close. It's about 50 centimeter landing on the top. And then I've got the threshold of the door as well, with the door sitting inside that door frame. So that's absolutely fine. I don't think anybody is really going to, to give me any trouble about that. So this is what works for me. And you can change it when you, when you come into this. You could, you can, I could add a left turn. I could add a right turn. You know, if you've got to completely customize and wiggle your way through a building, then you can. Let me see, how many more can I add? Uh, interesting, it's not gonna let me add any more after that. So I don't know if there's a building rig thing there, but then if I want to remove it, I can just do that. So yeah, that is, that's what I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this to make sure that it's exactly what I want, because obviously this isn't correct. So I'm going to jiggle these around, change them a little bit to make sure that I've got, so treads before, this is, this is another thing you can do. If you, if you need to stretch this amount here, I know that I actually need to have four treads this way and I need this to be at 14 and this gets me back to my 2523, 152, 1260. As I mentioned earlier as well, if you change the width of the staircase as well, that's obviously going to have an impact on your overall distance and if you change it for one, it automatically changes it for the other because the staircase can't get narrower. The other thing in the UK regs that can't happen is that the stairs can't change the pitch as they're going up. So it has to be a consistent um, slope. In this instance, it's 42 degrees. You can't change the going or the rise of the step midway through the staircase. So I'm gonna put mine back, I think it was at 800 or 805, something like that. If I did it to 800, buys me a little bit more this way. 2523 is good, 152 is good. 800 wide, and that is from the outside of the stringer to the outside of the stringer, which is really important. In the uh, the last staircase install I did, the client had measured this, and he thought it was from the inside to the inside. He had not accounted for the fact that it was measuring to the outside of the stringer, and that was what the what the issue was. It wasn't a huge problem, but it did mean that we needed to shim and pack things out, and stuff didn't quite land the way we wanted to. So, just be aware that this is from the from the very edge to the very edge of the stringer. Apart from this measurement here, you'll see it lands at the top step. So this is what will land on the, on, the, on the timber. I can then trim this little bit of excess stringer down if I need to for the door frame into my daughter's bedroom, etc., etc. if I don't want this sticking out into the landing. So once you have done all of your staircase layout, it'll give you a price as well. And you'll see this price is slightly different from the one that it was earlier because I've then gone on to the next step. So after doing the stair layout, you then start to look at your balustrades and what you want. So I've gone for square spindles and square posts because that's what we have in our house at the minute. 
and you can actually build here what you want. So you can click to add things on and it will change. I'll scroll down so you can see how the price changes in the bottom right hand corner as you add on additional sections of, of staircase or remove them, additional sections of balustrade or remove them. You could add on a newel post here if you needed to. I only want a newel post that runs around this point here but I have to remember the fact that this is going to be floating in midair until I create a landing to catch it, at which point I also need balustrade and spindles. So I've asked for an additional 1.2 meter balustrade, which will then get replace this and run from here all the way up. And I've also added in a half newel post, which I'll stick to the wall that will catch the balustrade and it includes the spindles. So you can see they've got all different extra lengths and the price actually doesn't change too dramatically on the length of the of the balustrade. So if we had, went for an extra half a meter, you'll see the price difference here. An extra 100 mil of balustrade costs three pounds. I mean, it's, it's, it's really not expensive. So I've gone for 1.2, knowing that it's long and I will be trimming it down. That's absolutely fine. I'm happy cutting it. That's absolutely fine. So I can say that I have finished adding the staircase because I'm happy, uh, the balustrade and the newel posts. I've done additional balustrade, a half newel post. I don't need a full newel post. So I'm happy with that. And then the materials and the construction come next. So you can have it where they assemble straight runs or it all comes in kit form. So if you've got a long straight run that can come pre-assembled or in kit form, curiously, the price doesn't change if you go for kit form. So have a look at the price down here. If I change this to kit form, it doesn't get cheaper. So actually, in my mind, it makes absolute sense. I'm not gonna try and be a hero. I'm not gonna try and spend my time assembling stuff if someone else can do it for free. So that's fine, standard construction. This, this changes the look of the staircase. So I want standard, I don't want open risers you know, and flush half rises and all that sort of stuff. I'm not, not interested in that. The stringer is 32 mil softwood. You can change that if you want pine or oak furniture grade, that does change the price. So it jumps up a little bit. And I think I might do that actually. I might do, well, no, to be fair, it's all gonna get painted. So I'm gonna do softwood. Now this is, this is a curious one and I'm not sure why this is the case. 22 mil MDF, Treads and risers are the cheapest, as you'd expect. So I would ideally like softwood treads, but we're gonna be carpeting this, so it's all gonna get covered. And if I do them at 32 mil, this top one here is gonna be 32 mil, and my flooring in the loft upstairs is 22 mil. So there'll be a one centimeter step down from the top step into the room, which I don't really want. So I'm actually gonna stick with 22 mil MDF. These are incredibly strong all the same, despite being MDF, it, it, conform, it conforms with UK building regs, so there's no issue with that. So I'm happy, and it's gonna get covered with carpet, and the riser, being softwood, is all gonna get painted anyway. The newel post is pine, I don't need oak ones, that's fine, they're getting painted. Same with the balustrade and the, um, the handrail as well. And then you can do extras, optional extras, you know, any, any additional bits that you, that you need. That fixing kit doesn't look too bad, to be fair. Two tubes of wood adhesive, a six mil hammer drill bit, uh, concrete screws. I actually have most of this stuff anyway, to be fair. So I don't need to, I don't need to add any of those things on. So yeah, and then you, and then you go through to the purchase and you've got a staircase for just under 1200 pounds in my case.